Ethnography is the traditional method of anthropology. So much so that, in fact, the Arabic word for anthropology is ethnographia, right? Literally, ethnography. So what does it mean? Literally, an ethnography means to study an ethnos, a group of people who share something in common. It's often where people get and in, go into communities. It used to be historically that they'd go into communities far away from them, exotic tribes and rural communities, and study how the people thought. It's a deeply immersive and environmental kind of framing for thinking about research, where you go into a community and try to live in it deeply to understand what people in it do. We talked in the lecture about emic approaches. Ethnography is an approach that allows you to achieve emic knowledge about a community if you do it well. Obviously, failure is always an option. And there are lots of different types of ethnographies, and people can range on all sorts of continuums from being more realist to being more interpretivist in terms of their approach to ethnography. I'll admit I've never really, really seen a positivist ethnographer. I don't actually think it's possible. There's too much messiness in the picture. I happen to be a big proponent of ethnography because since I study everyday politics, ethnography is a really well-suited method. A lot of what you do in ethnography is stuff you do in other research methods too. So for instance, you would read archives, you would read social media, you would read the news, you would interview people, you would have group conversations with people. All of these things are can be used as part of some ethnography. But the real thing that defines ethnography as a method apart from other methods is participant observation. In participant observation, you participate in social life or in whatever the activity you're studying is while observing it, frequently taking notes or reflecting and recording on what you're doing in order to analyze it. Now, there's a whole continuum of participant observation. On the one hand, there are pure observers, right? Somebody who's sitting on the sidelines. That person is probably not an ethnographer, right? But you can imagine an ethnographer who's quite close to them. Mostly what they're doing is watching. This can be appropriate when the thing you want to study is not something you can participate in. For instance, I'm not a Canadian citizen. So if I want to do an ethnography of my uh, local polling station on election day, well, I can't participate, I can't vote but I can be there and I can observe. And I can, of course, participate in speaking to people and in all sorts of conversations and ancillary activities. So I can participate in those ways. On the other side is all participation, no observation. And of course, this is quite hard too, because if you're conducting research, you're always observing, you're always thinking. You could think that the people who are doing the thing who are not you, the researcher, they're just participating and they're not observing. But the funny thing is frequently if you ask them what they thought, they have observational stories to tell you. So I think they were doing some observing at the same time. But the point is you can strike that balance anywhere. You can participate more or you can observe more. It depends on your comfort level and the appropriateness of the activities. But no matter what, the ethnographic approach, this is one of my favorite ways to think about it. It's from a political scientist named Ed Schatz. It is an approach that cares about what the people think with all the emotional entanglement that that embodies. That you approach learning what people are doing and why they're doing what they're doing with care for them and for learning from them. So in this section, you're gonna learn about what different political science ethnographers do, how political science ethnography is a little different from anthropological ethnography, and how an ethnography could be used in your project.